I didn't sit down with a grand plan when I was 15 and think this is where I want to be in, in 30 years' time or something. It's just fallen into place naturally. Being vegan is certainly not just about what I eat. It's about a whole lifestyle. If you love something, you don't harm it. I do the marathons to promote veganism in a positive way. I am the fastest woman in time elapsed, i.e. days, to go to the North Pole and run a marathon, and then to run one on all seven continents. My whole life is dedicated to animals. Every decision I make is consciously made in that it will benefit them in some way, otherwise I don't bother wasting my time with it. Sanctuary started in 1996. Previous to that, I'd been rescuing animals from just a normal house with no land. We've got horses at livery stables and farms dotted around the countryside. And one of the horses had a very bad accident due to negligence of one of the yard owners. And we decided then that we could no longer carry on rescuing in that formation in terms of if we were going to have the larger animals, we had to have them under our roof. So Oscar went to the vet, that's the horse that had the accident. He was there for 13 weeks. And in that period of time, I did vow that if he was able to come home, we would have a property for him to come home to that I could look after him in. And that's when we desperately searched and sold everything we got to try and buy this place and to start our own sanctuary where we could have all the animals under one roof and care for them on our terms. We've roughly got around about 400 animals. It is absolutely fantastic to share your life with that many animals. It can be extraordinarily busy, hectic, exciting, demoralising at times. All sorts of emotions. It is wonderful, obviously. It's a very great honour to be allowed to come into their lives and interact with them. And it is a joy to be able to offer security and peace and comfort to some of the terrible neglected cases we've taken in. I went vegan when I was six years old. It was a natural progression from going vegetarian when I was three. And the decision to go vegan was made when I was able to ask my mom, why does the chicken decide to give us her eggs? Why does the cow decide to give us our milk? Or doesn't her baby want it? And my mom had to just answer honestly. And when she told me, when I had it all explained to me, I decided from that point I was going to be vegan and it's something I've never reneged on and never regretted in almost 40 years. A typical day at the sanctuary starts for me personally about half past three in the morning when I crawl out of my bed and it's pretty much on the go until about nine o'clock at night. If you want to do this and you want to provide for them adequately, you've got to do it and I'm fully well aware of that. I don't take on anything lightly, so I knew that when we started a sanctuary it would be a hard life. I'm prepared for that. mentally fatiguing as well as physically. It does have its lows. The highs far outweigh them. I see them as entities in their own right. 
They're all individuals, individual personalities, and they have as many rights and should have as many rights afforded to them as we would expect for ourselves. They're all completely different. We don't own them. We're lucky enough to be able to share our lives with them. It's sunny. It's hard, honestly, to describe the connection. It's something that's there. It's just very natural to me. It's like asking why I breathe or something like that. It's just such a natural thing to me. People do write to me very often and say, you know, that I've inspired them, I've motivated them. I just think they see somebody normal that, that refuses to be beaten back down and keeps bouncing back like a little rubber ball. I've had obstacles in my own life to overcome in order to be able to achieve what I can achieve. And I think they just see the resilience of somebody who's probably not driven by self. I'm driven by a need to do this for others, not for myself at all. And I think that that probably inspires them. The global situations change and there is hardship and austerity and violence in the world. I think they look for probably little oases like these where there is no hidden agenda here, it's all about helping others. And I think that they probably find inspiration in the fact that even though they might feel the same themselves, it's very hard to actually understand sometimes that other people out there feel the same and you can connect with them. I do probably nine or ten sessions of running a week. Three or four days I'll run twice a day, and the other days I'll do longer runs. Three sets of speed work, 10 by 800 meter pushes, six by a mile pushes, or 20 by 400 meters, with a recovery run of about 10 miles in the evening. Wednesday, a medium length longer run, which is about 16, 17 miles to me. On a Sunday, I'll run between 23 and probably 30 miles and a hill session on Friday. And it's pretty much always the same, no matter what sort of event I'm doing, because I do train hard for road marathons. It's easy to adapt that up. Probably add a few more miles for the extreme endurance events, such as Marathon de Sable. There's no great secret to it. It's just lots and lots of hard graft and actually um, keeping it constant. I'm a 238 marathon runner. I have won 11 marathons, six in course records, completed Marathon de Sable twice. I have top 20 places in the London Marathon and Berlin Marathon. Top 10s in Amsterdam and Moscow. I am the fastest woman in time elapsed, i.e. days, to go to the North Pole and run a marathon and then to run one on all seven continents. There are three world records and they are for either time elapsed or actually physical time in money. I've just got back from running six marathons on six days on six different continents. Yes, he's here, and yes, he's got his winter woolies on. So he's ready to go. So Percy's here. We're ready to hit that snow and ice. All I can tell you is we started at bedtime, and it's now getting up time. So I'm not saying we've been out here a long time, but you can do the math. It's all good fun. Not. Let's just get run over. Quite possibly the worst, worst day of my life. <laughs> um, where are we going and what are we doing? What do you mean, baby? This is real fun, isn't it? This, this is great. <laughs> I hope that with my running, the main benefit it's had is challenging people's stereotypes and what they think or believe a vegan woman might be like. I mean, that you are going to be in some way weak or not predisposed to be doing extreme endurance events. So when you can get out there and you can not only show that you can, you know, complete them, but you compete in them at a high level, that actually does take people quite on the back foot and by surprise. That's 
basically the reason I've done it and continue to do it, because I, I can see that it's having that effect. I suppose I've got several favourites. I mean, the race that I ran my personal best in, 238, that's always got to come pretty high up on the list because um, obviously it's your best time. I don't quite know why I enjoyed it so much, but in 2012, I ran the Marathon de Sable and I had to do it with two fractured toes. And even though it was literally a week of living on painkillers and boiled sweets, I really enjoyed that experience. And the North Pole Marathon, we were lucky enough to see a polar bear in the wild, so that was a pretty amazing 24 hours for me. This is Percy Bear. He is the sanctuary's official mascot. I don't quite know why, he just fancied the job, so the, the role was vacant, so he'd stepped in. He's my travelling companion to all my races. He competes them with me. He doesn't actually compete in them, he just completes them. I carry him around. And he's been to the North Pole, he's been to Antarctica, he's been just about every race I've ever done. And he does lighten the mood amongst competitors and myself alike because he's got this big cheery smile and everybody takes to him. And um, I must tell you now, he's a big celebrity and star in Siberia. That's where he's made his most impact. He does break down a lot of barriers. Because if people see you coming with your vegan image and your vegan message, it can be a little bit, walls can be built up. But when they see that you're carrying a little teddy bear, it's amazing how people kind of smile and embrace the fact that they're probably she's not all bad after all. And um, they really do warm to him, so that's Percy. Obviously, having such a large family, there are the good times, but obviously there are the bad times in that every life cycle has to come to an end and they pass. And it is very, very difficult to deal with. Sometimes I just want to curl up in a ball and, and cry just very naturally like other people would, but I can't... It sounds brutal, but I can't afford the time to do that. I literally have to be able to stay strong for the rest of the animals and draw my strength from them, knowing that they need me now. And probably the animal that's passed away has said his farewell and my time for helping him has gone. This is where I feel most comfortable, around the animals. I basically spend most of my days alone down here with them. This is where I feel happiest, to be honest with you. This is home to me, not travelling. I don't particularly enjoy the travelling when I'm doing the marathon running. I'm always worried about the sanctuary, and I prefer to be outside than indoors, even. This is where I'm happiest. What I do here is perfectly normal to me. I almost think that everybody does the same thing. It seems normal to have 400 animals around you and to do this marathon running to this extent. It's, it's, it's all very relative to what I see as being a quite a normal lifestyle. So um, in that respect, I don't necessarily put myself on that kind of pedestal where I think I'm a role model, but it's nice to know that people are affected by what I do because that's the ultimate goal and aim, to make a positive impression on others. The sanctuary means everything to me. It's everything in my life. It's everything we live for. It's like a, something that we've created that is just the driving force in everything we do. There are times when you think, what would it have been like if I'd followed another path? I mean, obviously I think like that sometimes, occasionally, but no, I mean, it's everything. It's, um, it's everything I've always wanted to do and been drawn to do. 
it's who I am. This sanctuary is, is it's me, it's, it's, it's part of me. I hope they'd want to say that they were contented. I hope they'd want to say that they were happy. And I hope that they wouldn't also feel the need to say thank you because I honestly think I've only provided them with what they deserve as a right. I've given them their rights back. My hopes are that I can continue doing what I do. I'm sorry that the need is there that I have to, but whatever I can, I hope that I can continue to grow this place, make it more successful in terms of taking in many more animals and, and giving them hope and a future. Aspirations for the future are that the need decreases and that more people start to think about not just animals and their rights, but global issues that surround the welfare of animals and probably take on board the vegan message a little bit more so that my, my work becomes of secondary importance. This is the main thing. The animals always come first. Whether it be with my running, that's secondary. The promotion message, that has to be secondary. This is primary, always is, always has been, and always will be. Whatever difference you think you can make in doing whatever, go for it. For me, whether it be at the fire brigade when I'm doing my firefighting or whether I'm here looking after the animals or promoting it through veganism, do your own thing, do what it feels comfortable to you. Obviously you can have role models and look at other, what other people have achieved, but follow your own heart.